Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? All right. All right. I'm a, it's always good when the pastor's happy to be here. <laughs> Would you guys stand with us this morning? Oh, maybe we didn't fix that. We're going to sing a new song this morning. I would just encourage you, whatever you walked in here with that might be bringing you down, just leave it outside. Oh, I praise in the valley. I praise on the mountain. Oh, I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm outnumbered. Praise when I'm surrounded. Come on, church. Oh, I'll praise in the water. Hey, got two hands. Let's clap. My enemies drowned in. Hey, hey. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, my, my soul. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, I praise when I feel it. I praise when I don't. Oh, I praise because I know you're still in control. Because my praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. And it's more than a shout. There's Jericho now. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, so I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Oh, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. Keep it inside. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. oh, my soul. oh I praise because you're sovereign. Praise because you reign. Praise because you rose and defeated the grave. Praise because you're faithful. Praise because you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Oh, I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're rose. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise. Come praise the Lord, oh my soul, Lord, and I won't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside, oh and I won't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside, oh and I won't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside. I will praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Praise, 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 praise. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? So I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Oh, and I won't be quiet, my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Oh, and praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. A 
Amen. Father, we just give you the glory this morning. Lord, we ask that you would just come and be with each and every one of us. We want to feel you. We want to touch you. Lord, do we want to leave here changed? We don't want to leave here the same way we walk through these doors. Lord, I lift every heavy burden that's represented here, every health problem, every financial burden. I just lift it up to you right now, and I pray that we put it behind us, God, as we worship you. We thank you, Father. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, and I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. Sing that again. Open my eyes. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Oh, to see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Oh, come and open the eyes of our heart. Oh, and open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, and I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, and open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, and I want to see you. again church
your prayer this morning. Oh, is the Lamb. Just lift that up to the Lord.
Yes, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, that you raise us up from the lowest place, from the muck and mire. You reached out a hand, God, and we grabbed it. And you lift us out of that evil, out of that depression, out of that addiction, out of that brokenness, God, and you called us yours. You are worthy of all praise, Lamb of God. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. We thank you, God. Let's give a round of applause for Jesus this morning. Amen. 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 All right, welcome to New Life Church. You guys may be seated. Welcome to New Life Church. All those viewing us online, hey, how you doing? Go ahead, if you're watching online, put in the chat where you're watching from, whether that's, you know, Alabama, Tennessee, a boat, I don't know, wherever, <laughs> just put in the chat. As well, as if you have prayer requests, uh, the best way to do it is to put in our Facebook Messenger, um, and I would love to add you to our prayer chain. Amen? All right, do we have any first-time visitors this morning? First time visitors this morning? Awesome. There should be a connection card in the seat back in front of you. Uh, just put in your information, your name. Uh, really, I just need your cell phone number, how you found out about us, all that stuff. I love to take you out to coffee. Uh, who, here is, who here has been on a coffee with me? Yeah, it was good, right? It was fun, right? Yeah, good times, huh? All right, <laughs> there you go. I promise, I promise it's not gonna stalk you or do anything crazy. I just wanna get to know you, pour my heart out as a pastor, uh, amen. And uh, awesome. So we're going to go ahead and do fellowship time. Uh, we're going to take the next couple of minutes, say hi to somebody you don't know, as well as it's time to dismiss the kiddos, the kids' church. All right. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry, no, I know. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock. All right, all right. Start making our way back to our seat as I slow jog. 
That's as fast as I get, Chad, right there. You saw it. Land speed record, you guys. Who wants to foot race me? Anybody? That's what I thought, dude. That's what I thought. <laughs> Amen. All right. We're going to go ahead and transition into a time of prayer. Uh, but before I do, uh, I meant to mention this a little earlier, and I apologize for forgetting. Uh, we, um, can you go back to the other slide, Kenzie? Sorry. Thanks, buddy. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of fun stuff in the house right now. So we're actually uh, setting up with uh, digital bulletins so we can save ink and paper. I can't tell you how much ink costs. Like, oh my God, I feel so played and hustled every time I buy ink. Does anybody struggle with this? Oh my gosh, it's hard to be a Christian when you have to spend as much as they're asking for ink. <laughs> it's almost like traffic, right? Ink prices and traffic, That's those, those are the two things for me. But uh, so we're switching over to digital bulletins. Um, and so this is a fun QR code. So this is a fun thing that um, I was able to do with the Bible app. Who here has heard of the Bible app or actually has the Bible app? It's through version. It's incredible. It's free. It's my favorite Bible app, hands down, hands down. But they provide this amazing uh, e-bulletin for churches I didn't know about. And so I was able to build it out and all this stuff, and it has some amazing links into it. Uh, we actually have a church app now. So you can go and download the church app from this link as well. The church app is going to be the nerve center for the entire church. So it's going to have a way to find out what the church is doing, events, um, a way to give, a way to get up, get plugged into groups. Like we have our youth group, we have our children's ministry. We're going to be launching life groups in uh, September. So all of those things you can sign up for. You can see what's going on in the church. All of those amazing things. So check out this QR code. It's gonna be, it's gonna pop out a, a, up a few times in service. So if you don't catch it now, it's totally fine. We'll be back up later. All right, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and transition to prayer. Um, this, this to me is something that's just very important. I believe that if we're not a praying church, it's hard to say we're even a church at all. Amen. amen. Can I get, can I get a stronger amen on that? Because if, if we're not praying, if we're not interceding on others behalf to our heavenly father where's your faith even at amen church if you don't believe in prayer how can we even say that we are christians if we're if we're looking for every opportunity to get back at his feet to get back at his feet that's all we should want gosh i just lord i just want to be at your feet i want to be at your feet jesus i want to spend time with you i just want to learn your voice learn to hear your voice and be in that place. So I don't want this to become a routine thing because what is routine? It's one step away from religion, okay? This shouldn't be a religious exercise. This is a way for us to just pause for a second and be praying as a church, as a body for our family members. Because this is family, you guys. We're all family here. And the people that I pray for this morning, you may not know them, but you got cousins and other people in your family you may not know. Doesn't mean we can't take the second and just lift them up in prayer, all right? So however that prayer looks like for you, if you want to pray silently, if you want to pray out loud, if you want to come up to the altar, this altar is your space. This is free, all right? The altar is meant a way for us to just come. And a lot of times, all these things that we do in, in our relationship in church is just put it, putting us in a place that we can remember who God is and who we are. It's all about position. So getting to the altar, whether that's you know, crouched down or at your knees or however look, it's remembering our position. Remembering who God is. Who is upon this cross? That's Jesus Christ. And we should be able to come to him freely and kneel at his feet. So this altar is open to you. If you want to come up here this morning, amen? All right. So Father, we thank you for this time, Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege and honor, God, to be able to pray to you. And the fact that our prayers are heard. That your blood, Jesus, covers us and you make us whole. You make us new. You justify us, God, so that we come and can come into the holy of holies freely and loved as a restored son and as a restored daughter, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Lord Jesus, I want to lift up my brother Kim to you. He's been str struggling with some unknown respiratory illness or infection or something, God. He doesn't really know, but it's been wearing on him, God, and I believe he's recovering. He's on the road to recovery, I should say. So we just ask for your healing hand to be on him, God, that you would keep healing him, that you make him 
his breath, his breasts and his lungs, God, more productive, Father, as he's able to breathe and, and, and be able to get back to the ministry and the, and the things in life, God, that, that are bringing joy to him, God. He can't do the things he wants to do, God, because he just can't breathe right. He's struggling, Father. He's got shortness of breath and pain in his lungs, God. So we pray for a healing over that so you can get him back to where he needs to be, Father. I want to pray for our sister Jen with you, God. Uh, she's just had some tests done for some for some medical things that are coming across her way, God. And this is the hard part. This is the waiting, finding out the results of those tests. But right now in Jesus' name, God, we're praying for a holy outcome, a, a, a true outcome, a good outcome, God, that, that your hand would be in the outcome of those test results, Lord God, that right now, Father, she has no fear. The Bible says we do not have a spirit of fear, God. So we pray for peace for strength and a sound mind over her right now, Lord Jesus, wherever she at, God, that you would, that you in, in Jesus' authority, God, that you take away all those doubts and all those fears and all those things that are causing her to be anxious or worry, God, because there is no anxiety in your presence. There is no worry in your presence, God. So be with her, Holy Spirit. In the next few days, uh, before these results come in, God, I pray that they are a time of worship and intimacy and thanksgiving and gratitude, God, as she worships you throughout every day, every moment, waiting for that good outcome to pr- manifest itself, Jesus. We believe in that in Jesus' name. And I want to pray for my sister, Caitlin, God, that she's uh, recovering from uh, a recent neck and back injury, Father that as she keeps her on this road of recovery, that you keep healing her, Father, whatever that looks like, uh, like with physical therapy or rehabilitation or certain things that, you know, a lot of times it can be hurt, uh, hurt more doing those things, God, than the actual injury itself, God. So I pray that you would ease her pain, God, that you give her the ability to, to do those things in order to make herself whole again, Father, so she can take care of her son, that she can get back to the amazing things in her life that bring her so much joy and purpose, God. I got off a wonderful phone call with her, and you've just poured vision and purpose into her life, God. So she needs to be healed to do that God to walk out her purpose Jesus we pray for healing we pray for recovery God that you make her better than she once was Lord God so that she can have everything she needs in order to chase after this new vision you have for her life God in Jesus name finally Lord I want to pray over our sister Brenda who just uh, had a uh, an injury God she broke her wrist and she just went and had surgery and she's in the, on the road to recovery now Lord God so we pray for that speedy recovery Lord, that you would mend the bones, God, that you would do everything you need to get her strong again for you, Father, so she can live out her life, God. She can get back to the things that she's doing with her husband in South Carolina, God, and we're just so thankful that that we know that you will heal heal her, God, that you are going to heal her, Father. In Jesus' name. Finally, I just want to lift up our, our church, New Life Church, Father, that we can be a church just like Dr. Terry mentioned, Father, we can just surrender to you, that we can submit to you. And submission is all about humility, God, so we can break that, that, you, that we would have that spirit here, God, from, from, from the leadership team, from myself, from ministry leaders, everyone involved, God. We, we need to remember and be reminded, God, that we are submitting this to you, that this is your church, this is your city, God. These are your people. Father, you've just given us opportunities to steward the call to seek the lost, to seek the broken, to seek the hurting Jesus. So let us remember, God, that these are your children you're running after through us and that this church is blessed only because of your hand. So, God, we plead that, Father, that you remind us. Also, God, I want to lift up joy in the rock, Father, to you, that as as things are coming closer and closer, that we believe in the outcome, God, the resources are going to come, the people are going to come, the plan is going to get solidified, all that so that we can blow the roof off this city, worshiping unashamedly your name, Jesus Christ, in this city, God, that we can lift our heads up literally to heaven and praise you, Jesus, in our city, that we can say you are the source, you are the joy, you are the peace. Because there's people here that need you, God. There's families here that need you. So we pray that we can keep it free, that we can keep it inclusive, Lord God, for everyone that would come and taste and see just how wonderful you are, Jesus. So we believe in that. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Excellent. All right, we're going to get ready to do our tithes and offerings. Ushers, if you guys want to come forward. As well as if you want to give online, you can zap this QR code, and there will be a link on there to give online. Uh, If you download the app, it's also through the app as well.
You guys can come forward. Linda. Thank you, thank you, Lord, that uh, that we are able to gather here and freely worship you. We come here with needs, and I pray that um, you would meet every need today and open our hearts so that we can let down our guard and, and freely worship you. Cry, cry out, you know, whatever we need to do to feel a touch from you. And Lord, we, we bring our tithes because we want to be obedient and we trust and we give in faith that our tithes are going to be used for your glory and your glory only. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this church and our pastor. Grow us, grow us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so just a quick announcement. Uh, we are going back to our fellowship nights, but we are making a few changes. So we're actually titling them Friday Fellowships. You guys guess why? Because they're on Friday nights. Hey! <laughs> so we're doing Friday night fellowships. That's going to be the third Friday of every month. That's going to start next month. That's going to be August 18th, and that's going to start at 7 p.m. Uh, that's going to have food, it's going to have times for us to hang out, as well as we're going to do some games. Um, I'm a huge board gamer. Like, is anybody here like board games? Is anybody here like competitive board games? All right, I see all of you guys. Get oh, my boys, dude, let's go. Okay, it's going down. <laughs> bang, we played Bang the other day. Miss Gann's not here, but she, she crushed us, dude. It's this fun little game where it's like a, like a, a dice game, like Yahtzee. And you, you like shoot people, you're cowboys and outlaws and all this stuff, and you have to like say bang every time you shoot somebody. Yeah, it wasn't fun at all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I had a hoot. I had a hoot, y'all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're starting that back up. That's like I said, that's going to be August 18th, Friday fellowships, third Friday, 7 p.m. until we're done. Um, I'm hoping we can have some child care there as well, so I'm going to work that out. For all, the, all of you families that have littles, I know it can be really hard to try to figure out a babysitter and doing all that, so we're going to do our best to get that worked out. Amen? Amen. All right. So I believe we're, we're ready. Yeah, let's, let's play the vid. Would you guys join with me in prayer as we pray over today's message? Father God, we thank you for this time, Lord, to get into your word. There's always a blessing when your word is read, but an even bigger blessing, God, when we submit ourselves to your Holy Spirit, to that reading, God, that you speak to us, that you plant that word in our hearts, and we take action, to God, to see it be fruitful and multiply. So we pray for that for this service, God, as, as we finish out this word study in Romans God, that all the things that we've touched on and, and things that you've made alive in your scripture in Romans these last five weeks, God, that it wouldn't be just nice words, Father, but it'd be life-changing words that you've put into our hearts that have motivated us, that have convicted us through your Holy Spirit, that you have drawn out something deep, God, as we, as we call out from deep to deep, from our heart to yours, Lord Jesus. We pray for that for today, Lord, that I submit today's message to you. Lord Holy Spirit, I pray you come Come on this house, come over this room, come over all, the, all those viewing us on, online, Lord God, for me. We, we submit ourselves to your Holy Spirit. We, we want nothing but that relationship. 
All the things be, be burnt away, everything else, all other distractions, all other things, Lord God, that are not of you. We honor you, we love you, Father, and pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys. Week five, can you believe it? Where does the time go? My goodness. It is week five of uh, this word study of Romans. Have you guys been having a good time? Yeah, yeah all right, two people, sick. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, no, but seriously, Romans is, is my favorite chapter. Who here, is, who, who here has never read Romans before this study started? So you've all read through it. Okay, awesome. Who here has gleaned something new from the book of Romans? Maybe my sermon, maybe not, but at least when you were in your word, what have you, was there something new that the Holy Spirit spoke to you about that, that brought to life? This is the question. Is anybody? Yeah, let's see some hands. I want, I want to see the hands so that others can see what God's doing, right? It's all about, like, I, I, like the, before I get in the recap, my, my purpose as a pastor is to create you a self-feeder. Do you guys know what, know what it means to be a self-feeder? It means that when you come to church, you, you aren't coming starving to death because you know how to feed yourself. The church's job is not to feed you once a week and you get your you know, weekly ration of the word or God. You have been equipped in such a way that you know how to dig through this and feed yourself. All right? Because let me be real. I'm, I'm, I'm a daddy, but I'm not your daddy. Okay? <laughs> let me say that again. I'm a daddy, but I'm not your daddy. All right? It's not my job to feed you and do your laundry and make sure baby's doing okay. All right? I love you, church, but it's not my job. My job is to make men and women of God. You hear me? Okay. So that's what it, to be a self-feeder means that you understand your job and duty and role and position as an adult and maturing believer because there's never a place where you fully arrive. Amen. We should always be hungry and maturing in Christ. But that's the whole idea of Romans. Romans is meat and potatoes. All right. This ain't no milk. This ain't no formula. And so I really hope that the Holy Spirit has been convicting you and drawing out that need, that hunger for something deeper with God. Not just that surface level Christianity, but like, yeah, I go to church and, you know, I say Jesus when, I'm, when, when I get upset. You know, I'm just kidding. That's a profanity. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> like, where is your walk with Christ and where do you want it to be? That's what bo the book of Romans is always all about. Where are you and where, are you, where do you want to be? Because as we started this study, the number one thing is the problem of sin. It is a real problem. And the Bible does not measure sin like we measure sin. We're saying like, yeah, I just do a little lies here and there. I white lie this or I white lie that or on my taxes or my diet or different things. Uh, it's not like I'm out here killing people, right? It's not like I'm out here cheating on my wife. When, the, when God says that and this are exactly the same. That and this are exactly the same, meaning that it should grieve your spirit. It should break your heart on the same level as God every time you sin. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is not doing everything how God wants us. Now, this isn't a, a report card theology. This is a relationship situation. Every time we sin, it creates a separation between you and God. And that's the biggest issue with, with sin. No matter if you're lying or you're having premarital you know, sex or you're having affairs or you're doing gnarly stuff, it's about the sin separating you from God. We were never meant to be separated. We, the, the plan for us in the Garden of Eden was perfect relationship, perfect proximity, that we're always together. But the good news is that we can have the rescue from sin. Oh, you can put the recap up, sorry. Uh, you, can, you can have the rescue of sin. Now, who rescues us? Jesus, right? Come on, church. You get, did you get rescued? Have you been rescued? Yeah? I'm a, big, I'm a big Marvel nut. Anybody here like Marvel? Like superheroes? I mean, it's cool to be a nerd, dude. Like, I'm 100% a nerd. I got comic books at the house, dude. Okay? I was playing Spider-Man video game at my house, my son on my chest, and he was pretending to play. And he's like, I love Spider-Man. It was so cute. Anyway, that's a tangent. Um, but I love superheroes, and I think a lot of people do. The reason why it's like a, probably a trillion-dollar industry right now with all the movies and stuff they're making is because it's cool to see good triumph over evil. Isn't it great? You always know what you're going to get when you go see a Marvel movie. There's going to be war. There's going to be contention. There's going to be drama. 
But you know, good is always going to prevail. And the cool thing is you always see the normal folk get rescued by someone who's super powered. And so that is the cool thing is that we get to be rescued by our superpower Jesus. That he chose us. He said, I got you, you're mine. I know this sin problem is infecting everyone since the, since the fall of the garden, but he has come to rescue us. And we have to remember that. It's not, it's not your self-righteousness. It's not your money. It's not your looks. It's not who your daddy is or how much money you got in the bank. None of that will rescue you. There's only one name, under one name that you can be rescued, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one path to Jesus, one path to salvation, one path to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ. He is the rescuer. And in that, in that rescuing, a lot of time we finish that sentence. Like, or, or I should say, our, our faith journey ends at that sentence. Like, yeah, I gave my life to Christ, period. When that should be a comma. All of it like, yeah, I got saved when I was this age or that age. You know, I've been trying to live right, trying to do the right thing, going to church when it's convenient or, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. I read a couple books or I read a couple chapters a year. Or I go to Easter. Or I go to, you know, Christmas, all these things. We call them creasters. Everybody heard that? It's a new term I just recently heard about, creaster Christians. But that's, the, the thing is that we should be motivated to pursue righteousness. Not our self-righteousness or not the appearance of righteousness, right? Look how well-kept I am. Look how learned I am in God's word. Look how everyone else, look at the image I'm pre pre presenting to everyone else of how good I am. But inside, you're rotting. That's called a Pharisee. That's a whitewashed tomb, right? That's in God's word. If you don't need it, know it, read it, okay? That's in his word. It's not about how you look on the outside. That's self-righteousness. It's about the internal exchange exchange being the key word of what I think is my righteousness which with the true righteousness of Jesus Christ and the only way we can get that is by pursuing Jesus through the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit that's it so if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit church I'm here to tell you you cannot have righteousness outside of the Holy Spirit I don't care how much you don't swear, how much you give to the church, if you serve the church, if you're a faithful attender, any of those things, those do not matter. The only thing that matters is your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because outside of that, you can't get it. You can't download it, okay? You're missing the ethernet cable. I don't care how, what, what you replace it with, you know, a, a string of gold, it's not gonna produce, it's not gonna connect your data from one spot to another. You need the ethernet cable, it's a weird analogy, but follow me. You need that ethernet cable from yourself to Jesus, and that's called the Holy Spirit. That's the only way it's done. But it's about the relationship. The relationship, this is, this is the two weeks ago, is that it's all about God's choice. He chose you, not only once, right, in your salvation moment, but he keeps choosing you every day. Now let me ask you a very hard question. Do you choose God every day? Yes. Now I'm not just talking about your faith, I'm talking about your time, your devotion, your pursuits. Let me put it another way, your obsession. What do you think about every time you wake up in the morning? Is it I gotta check my bank account, I gotta check my social media, see who's ding-donging me or whatever about this thing or that thing, or I need to check my work emails because you're running your own business and you got 12 employees to look after. What is it, where is your heart at? What is, and that's, that's your first fruit. What do you give your first fruit to every morning? Okay, think about that. It's a relationship. God says every time you wake up, his mercies renew, meaning he chooses you. He chooses you. He says, my mercies renew in your life, I choose you. And he's just waiting for us. Man, I can't wait. Hopefully they choose me today. I'm here. I'm waiting. I got a fresh word for you. I got love for you. I got my presence for you. Choose. Oh, today went by. Well, I'm still loving him. My mercy's renewed tomorrow. I'm waiting for them. Let's remind ourselves of that, that God chooses us every day. And this, this, this closing is all about why is the synopsis of, of this entire week, is what does it look like to be a Christian? How do we really do this? What's the in, how do we walk in step with Christ? So if you turn your, to your word to me, to uh, Romans chapter 12, verses one through three. 
Romans 12, verses 1 through 3. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, uh, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now check this next verse out. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. There's a very specific piece in here that uh, I want to make sure that we don't miss on. The last verse of three is that we have all been given a measure of faith to get through exactly what you're going through. Okay? Faith is, is a spiritual gift, meaning I can't earn my faith. I can't study faith and become more, more expanding of my faith. It is a gift from God. Okay? And he gives me exactly the measure of faith that he needs that he has assigned me to get through what I need to get through in order for me to be able to do all these things that were just said. In order for me to not, and this me speaking me personally, but also you, in order for you to not be conformed by this world, to be transformed by the renewal, to seek out after his Holy Spirit, to have your situation and your character changed to reflect more of Christ. All of that comes from the specific measure of faith God has assigned you. So when you pray for faith, pray for God, I, need ex- I, need, I know that you have already given me enough. Help me believe that it's enough. Help me believe that I'm enough. Help me believe that where I'm at right now is testing and, tr- and putting me through trials in order for me to learn something. Because you've already given me everything I need, I just need to be aware of it. Amen? Amen. So let's dig into this. The first part, it talks about in verse 1 is that we are to present our bodies as living sacrifices. Now, if you've read any of the Old Testament, you'll see that there's always this this mention of a sacrifice representing a cleansing. You know, there's a burnt offering. You have to make a sacrifice. A life has to die. Now, Jesus was the end-all, final sacrifice, all right? He gave his life so that we could live in salvation and through redemption, yes. But we, it doesn't doesn't, uh, permit us to not offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Now, it's not about doing works so that you can be saved. That's not what I'm saying, and that's not what Paul is saying here. What he's saying is that your life should look as a living sacrifice, meaning that it's not a sacrifice that's one and done, meaning that, hey, I went to church once, and I'm good, or, or, you know, I stopped doing this one time, and I'm good. That's a one-off sacrifice. A living sacrifice is something that stays, that maintains, that keeps going every day, that you're looking for new opportunities to sacrifice of yourself. Because it's about who is, who is actually on the throne of your life. Are you or is Jesus Christ? So if Jesus is the Lord of your life, you should be looking for new opportunities. And I, I use that word often because it's all about perspective. There are opportunities in your life, we're just calling them problems, okay? Let's be real, okay? Problems are just opportunities that you haven't seen what God's trying to do in them yet. So he wants to create opportunities for you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. It's all about position. I mentioned this earlier about prayer. Like what is the altar? The altar is a position that we can look up to the cross, right? Imagination. Jesus is hanging at the cross. I'm like, you know, I'm not even worthy of to be at the same level. I need to be down here, God. I need to be down here at this altar on my knees because that's who you are. You're worthy, God, for this position. This is where I need to be. Otherwise, pride steps in. Okay, what did it say in there? That we should not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. He's the only one deserving to be up here, meaning he is my Lord. He is my God. I need to offer myself to him. When you wake up in the morning, think about that as your new prayer. God, what would you have me do with this day? How can I I use this day in the best fashion to bring you the most honor and glory? Whether that's your ability, your, your talents, your money, your resources, your time. I don't care what you do for money. All things can be used to bring him glory because the Bible says that it's not, you're not working for your boss, you're working for God. 
That's your ultimate boss. Is that, I don't care if you're scrubbing, scrubbing the bottoms of boats, you know, or you run a, a, a Fortune 500 company. Everything you do is unto God for his glory. That's position. Remembering that he's in that position so that we can offer ourselves to him because your gifts, your talents, your looks, your, your, your pedigree, meaning who your parents were, who, you know, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, whatever that situation looks like, we're all from God anyway. And so he's given us all that so we can say, God, what can I do more with this day? I want to offer myself to you. I want to offer my mouth to you, my ears to you, my money, my time, my, my, you know, I have a really difficult boss, or maybe I'm the really difficult boss, and I need to learn to offer more of myself to you. Somebody nodded over here. I'm not pointing any fingers. But, uh, <laughs> no, but like, what, do we, what are the opportunities to look forward to more of an offering? It's all about perspective. Luke 9.23 says, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I said that really fast. So this is a perfect prerequisite. So he's like, yeah, I want to follow Jesus. Because why? Because I want Lord to bless me. And I want to know that if I give $100, I'll get $1,000 back. Or, you know, this prosperity gospel that's infecting our, our country. That's broken and it's wrong. Yeah. Message. Okay? God's, God's no Amex credit card. If you treat him as one, you're going to be in a really hurt. A big, a big situation for hurt. Okay? I mean, come on. Let's be real. What this is saying is that if you want to be a Christian, it's not going to be all roses and flowers and puppies and, you know, blessings. When, uh, the American version of blessings or the American understanding, because I've talked to people in our country, in other countries, is that blessing usually has to do with money in America, whereas other countries, it has to do with generational blessings. Check that mindset out, right? Is that in America, we're like, yes, I want the Lord to bless me. I want to have money. I want to be famous. I want to be successful. Lord, bless me. Whereas the idea should, Lord, I want to bless my family. I want to bless my generations to come. I want to bless my son's grandbabies so that they can catch a spiritual truth, a spiritual truth that will keep them protected and hedged against the enemy. Not just money. Money comes and goes. But something inside their spiritual DNA that will stay with them for eternity. So the, like the house of Craner can be known for that, right? The house of Craner is a, a house of prayer or something, you know, whatever. Something like that. But check out these prerequisites. I'm going to mute this real <coughs> Prerequisites to follow Christ. So first thing is deny yourself. Deny yourself. Okay, that's getting out of that whole selfish mindset of like, you know, I'm following Christ just so I can get this. The first step, the first prerequisite is to deny yourself. So all things that you want and desire and think you need and all this ideology, idolatry that we pursue, we put ourselves at the mantle, right? At the highest position that you are the God of your life, not Jesus. So number one is to deny yourself. And number two is to take up his cross daily. I got to see a, a replica of an actual cross, nine feet tall, six plus feet wide, like, I don't know, what's the measurement, a foot? I don't know, like four by four, I don't know, what, like a foot by foot, I guess? Is that contractor chat? I don't know. It was a foot this way and a foot this way. Foot, cube, a cubic, thank you. <laughs> I knew there was some lumberjack language in there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's a lot of wood. That's heavy. You know, there was a guy in Colorado, his name was Arthur Blessed. If no one's ever like, looked up this dude, incredible man of God, he takes and he walks the cross all over the country and the world. And he lives in Colorado, and I've met him and shared many conversations with the man, and walked his cross with him throughout Denver, Colorado. Um, but, I mean, he's an older dude. He's probably like 70 plus now, maybe even 80. His, his cross is like this big. You know what I mean? And God bless him. Like, he walks it, but it's, it's light. It's, it's, it's like the, uh, you know, I don't know, like carbon fiber or something super light. That's not the cross that Jesus is talking about here. He's saying, you want to walk with me, number one, deny yourself. Realize that you have to put yourself on the cross. So nail John Craner at the cross. Nail Chad. Chad, you got to nail yourself up here, bud. And then he's saying, take the cross with your nailed dead body on it and hoist it on your shoulder 
and pick that up every day, realizing that you're nailed to this cross and now you can follow me. That's the, men, that's the mindset of what it means to follow Christ. That's the mindset, is it's gonna be brutal, it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be hard, but the Bible says that in our trials, in our suffering, we may have joy. And I'm not talking about happiness, I'm talking about the spiritual gifting of joy. Now if you've ever been pressed and squeezed and burnt and gone through a hard situation, but had joy and peace in your life, that is the closest you can experience God this side of heaven. That's my belief, because I've been through it. If you're literally in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you're in the fire and yet not consumed. You are close to God. That is exactly what he wants from us. And it's out of that position that he wants us to follow God. He, he wants us to follow Jesus. And the way that we do that is number one, is we have to say no to the world. We have to say no to the world. It says do not be conformed, right? Say no to it to the patterns of this world. The patterns meaning that in all of humanity's history, sin has always been just usually a couple of things. Pride, idolatry, sexual immorality, all of these things. Pursuing the lust of the flesh, right? All these things were basically saying worshiping other gods. And they look, like, to look at other, look, like to manifest themselves differently. Could be money, other things like that. But what are, what are patterns that you have developed right now that you're really comfortable in sinning? Because maybe it doesn't seem like a big deal. What are the little altars of gods in your life that you go to every day and that you worship at? Because they're asking for your time. Because society does it and everybody else does it. And when you're around the water cooler, your friends or your coworkers are asking you, hey, have you done it? And you don't want to be left out. When the Bible says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. So just because everybody else is doing it, who here is a parent, okay? I grew up in the 90s. Who here grew up in the 90s? Okay, my parents, do as I say, not as I do. You know, that thing, I hated that. But the other one was, well, if they asked you to jump off a bridge, would you? Oh my gosh, bro. <laughs> I don't know, mom and dad. Depends if I had a parachute. No, I was kidding. But that's the thing, right? It's like somebody, somebody asks you to do it doesn't mean you should do it, right? And we get that. As a parent, it's like, yeah, 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 I get it now. But that's exactly what Paul is saying here as a parent, as a spiritual father to us. Just because the world is saying you should do this or, you know, these vices or these behaviors or these habits or whatever, does that mean you should do it, church? Just because everybody else is saying you should do it, you shouldn't do it. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. So what areas in your life do you know you need to start saying no to? Because it takes courage and boldness to say no to something. But that's, a, that's a, a mature believer response. Well, I don't want to offend them. I don't want to be geeky or, you know, I don't want to look dumb or, you know, I just, I don't want to be separated and say, you know, like, I can't do this. Why? Because of Jesus or my pastor said so, you know? Okay, like, then who are, you're not worshiping God, then you're not worshiping Jesus. You're worshiping the image of your, your friends. You're worshiping or the opinions of your friends because you want to pretend to be somebody you're not. You're going to come to church, you're going to pretend to be this person, and when you're around your friends or your coworkers, you're going to be this person. That's called, that's called a hypocrite, if you didn't know that. And being a hypocrite, if you've been around church or heard anything about church, it's a pretty big deal. Like most people hate hypocrites. And there's a reason why, because it, it does nothing but spit in the face of Jesus Christ. Spits in his face. You're like, yeah, I love you, Jesus, but then as soon as the homie comes up and says blah, 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 you're get out of here, Jesus. I'm gonna go pretend to be like this, talk like this, live like this, because I'm embarrassed of you, Jesus, and I wanna do this life. Come on, man. So say no to the patterns of this world. Genesis 4, 7 says, if you do well, you will not be accepted, and if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, desires its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Another translation says, it desires to have you. So sin, a manifestation, right, desires to have you. At every moment, it crouches and creeps at your door, waiting for you to step out into the world. 
It's ready to trip you up. It's ready to tempt you. It's ready to do all these things. You have to be ready to say no. You have to be used to saying no. You have to, be a, you have to understand you have the authority to say no in Jesus' name. Because all it wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy. All the things you are walking out of your home, before you walk out of your home, turn around and look at it. Look at your wife, look at your husband, look at your kids, look at your dog, your lizard, your bird, whatever. Those are lives that are dependent on your nose. That they need your nose. Because otherwise someone's going to come in and try to steal, kill, and destroy them. It's your job, especially men. Men, you need to hear me. It's your job to say no. Your job to say no, to protect your family, protect your wife, protect your kids, your job. You need to hear that today. Number two, say yes to the way. The way is a code for, for Christians. I'm stuck on this thing right now, man. I'm so stuck. Uh, but it, before Christians were called Christians, I'm going to say this every Sunday, they, they, they're, they're like, sp- their secret speech for it was, hey, hey man, you will follow the way. Hey, bro. Hey, you follow her the way? Like, wait, you know, <laughs> West Side? <laughs> Just kidding, sorry. <laughs> no, you will follow the way. Like, anyway, so that's before they, we, they had word, the word for Christian, right? But that's the cool idea is that that's the way. Jesus is the way, the truth. Say it again. That's right. Only through Jesus. He is the way. Only through Jesus, right? So we are, are we either following his way or somebody else's? So think about that. You got to start saying yes to his way, his path, his direction, all of that, saying yes to that. Now, there may be things in your life right now that you have been saying yes to, and you're like, yo, pastor, I get it. I, I want to do these things, but I'm too busy. I don't have time, man. Like, you know, I got to do this with work, or I got to do this with my working out, or uh, uh, I got kids and they want to do blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I got I to gotta watch at least 14 episodes of this show and <laughs> whatever, like all these things that have the time. I, where am I supposed to do this? So in order for you to start saying yes, you got to do what first, right? Well, that's why the first thing was no. You got to say no to things, no to people. No to things that have already come into your life and try to tell you what to do with your time. So you need to reevaluate your situation, evaluate your commitments, evaluate, let me put it another way, your devotion. Who are you devoting your time to and, and allow God to discern his will over it and say, gosh, I need to start saying no to this, this, and this. And now I got more time to say yes to God to say yes to his way because you can't make time where there is none and I'm not asking you to do that what I'm asking you to do is be bold and brave and start saying no to somebody or some things and be empowered to that you don't got to be rude you don't got to be mean you don't got to be self-righteous you can blame me if you want but like pastor said I can't do that man I'm sorry <laughs> I'm a big boy I can take it all right I'm gonna get some hate mail now watch <laughs> hate email sorry <laughs> but no, you start saying no to stuff so that you can start saying yes to Jesus, okay? So that you can start having more of these opportunities because King David said in Psalms 1-2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. So if you want to be somebody who has more time with God, you need to understand that comes from studying his word. Studying his word, not just reading his word. All right, there's a big difference. Maybe you got a verse of the day that pops up or whatever, and you're like, okay, tight. Yeah, you know, I give God three seconds. No, 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 no. What, what King David was saying here is King David not only read the word, he meditated on it day and night. Meditation comes through studying it. We've been doing this awesome Bible study in youth, and some of the most profound things I've heard through the Holy Spirit has come from these boys right here. I'm so proud of you guys. And it's studying his word. Studying his word, right? We don't read it for just three seconds. We're like an hour deep, man, and we're praying and we're talking and we're doing all this radical thing just on a verse, right? One verse. God downloads an amazing revelation into our lives. But you have to study it. You have to dig it. You have to seek him. 
And you have to learn that it's your job. It's not my job. Okay? You've got to dig in through that and say, how bad do you want it? How bad do you really want it? You know, I worked with a lot of, because uh, um, my wife was a nanny for some athletes and stuff, and having some conversations with people, the, the mental fortitude that it takes to separate an amateur from a professional is profound. It's not athletic ability, it's mental fortitude. Okay? Because there's more athletically talented people who are amateurs, they just don't have this. They don't have the strength, the will. What I would say is like a determination, the grit, right? Rocky Balboa is the big, biggest picture. Who likes Rocky? Oh my gosh, I'm just, I love those movies. Watch all of them. And Creed, the Creed ones are dope too. Um, but, so it's, it's like, okay, like, hey, I know I gotta do it. I gotta do, do the jumps. I gotta do the running. I gotta do the workout. I gotta do the, the drills and all this stuff. Boxing hasn't changed too much. But what separates athletes or, or people who practice boxing from professional boxing is this. And that's exactly what this is, is saying is that don't just read the word. Get your heart ready. Start planting a garden in, his, in your heart because you may have some weeds, you may have some rocks, you may have some, some invaders in your heart that you, or, or some pests, let me put it that way. You may have some pests in your, in your garden of your heart right now that you need to eradicate and kill. And that's going to take some work. That's going to take some work. But that's because you got to start saying no. you got to start cleaning it. you got to start watering yourself to allow your heart to be ready to be able to study his word. And not just read his word and study his word, but you have to pray through his word. That's a huge component of our studies is we pray through it. But also the next level of that, I would say, is fasting. Fasting is like the nitrous oxide. Or is that the right one when you hit the nitrous button? So my, where are my tuners at? Okay. <laughs> you hit the nitrous button, right? And it supercharges your RPMs and blah, blah, blah. I don't know the words and stuff. I just watched Fast and Furious, but. <laughs> but like, you know what I'm saying? You're like, dude, I'm going, okay? The fasting is the same recipe of that, but it, ta- it takes grit. It takes determination. It takes getting in it and realizing that I, what I want, what I'm getting from God is <clears throat> not enough. It's that devotion of saying, I want more, I want more, I want more. I am obsessed with you, God. I want more. What happens on a Sunday? <clears throat> not enough. I want more. I'm reading my Bible, studying my word. Ugh, not enough, God. I want more. You know, where's that obsession? Where's that obsession? We need that obsession, church. We should be obsessed. Because what did he do, right? Week two, he rescued us so that we could be the indwelling of his righteousness to help others see how great he is. And there are people who need us, church. They need us. And you can't be some baby Christian, lukewarm Christian trying to go out in war with your slingshot. You're not equipped. To be equipped, you need to study and meditate and get in his word, get, get trained and mature yourself to be ready for the war that he's calling us to. Meditate day and night. All right, last thing here is to pray for God to discern your purpose. In the, in the, in the scripture, I think it was verse two, it said, uh, where is it? We got it right here. So that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. By testing, right? By trials, by suffering, In order to develop patience, you have to have trials for God to produce his fruit in you so that you can become intimate with him. Like I said, like when you go through something hard, you know really quick where your intimacy level is is at with God. And that's how we hear his voice. That's how we commune with him. That's how we develop that relationship with him. So that, though, we can learn what our purpose is. What I should say his purpose is. We learn what his purpose is for our life. Because we get it twisted, right? Let's be real. A lot of times we think about what is my purpose for my life. I mean, I think about my son getting ready to go to elementary school. And it it, it terrifies me. (coughs) Excuse me. It terrifies me because I had this chance to sit down with this amazing doctor. His name is Michael Burroughs. He leads all the Christian schools for Florida. He also does a lot of Christian schools for... uh, overseas. His big thing was, is that there are are contending worldviews. 
One is the regular secular worldview, and the other one is our godly worldview. And the fact is, is that in modern day education standpoints, our children are being indoctrinated by the secular worldview. And they're told that they are the God of their own life. They're told that if they want to be happy and successful, they have to get the degree and go to the college and spend all this money and create the American dream and do all of these things. And that's what will give them what they want. And that terrifies me because that's not their purpose. What is your purpose? Why were you crafted fearfully and wonderfully in your mother's womb? And God poured his breath into you so that you could go to college. And I'm not down in college. I went. I get it. It's wonderful. But it was after I discovered my purpose that I went. But you got kids like, like these guys over here have always told that, hey, you should go to college. You should do this and do that. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking because these are kids who are supposed to understand every facet of their life and understand what they're supposed to do at 17 years old just for money, let alone, not even talking about their divine purpose. I mean, there's 57-year-old guys that I know who don't know their purpose yet and have been unhappy with their life because they did all the other things everyone else told them to do and that's a, that's a big thing of this world, that you should do this or you should do that from this person or that person. That, you know, your uncle or your buddy or your teacher or your coach, all these things. Everybody's telling you what to be, but we don't listen to the one voice that has the only authority to tell us who we should be. Amen. Right? And then you got unhappy people running around this life having divorces or, or cheating on their wife or being absentee fathers and doing all these things because it stems from a brokenness of purpose. Because once you catch your purpose, you can be honest and truthful and faithful. All the other things will come out of it. But if you're just an orphan child just running around with no identity, no idea of who you really are, who God is, or who he's called you to be, you're just going to be going from one thing to the next as you worship yourself and doing things that make you feel good. And yeah, this girl's pretty, so I'll marry her. But now she's not pretty, so I'm not going to marry her or not stay married to her because this other little young thing, pretty thing, is all up in my face. And cool, now I got all this money because I went to college and I can dote it on her. And blah, blah, blah. Like, it's insane, dude. It's insane to me. It's insane to me. It's insane. The, the truth of it is, is it comes from God saying, this is who you are, my son, my daughter. And that's where everything else should pour out of. And the only way we know that is backing it up, right? Have you been saying yes to him? Back it up another level. Have you been saying no to the world? Because if you say yes to the world, you're saying no to him and you lose your purpose, and the enemy wins. Chad, are you gonna come up? <clears throat> the good news, church, is that there is still time. I don't know where you're at today. If you have a relationship with Jesus or you don't, but there's always time. The thief on the cross was in his dying breath, and he proclaimed Jesus Lord, and Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. There's always time. So I don't know what this last week has looked like for you or this last decade or longer. How many people have hurt you or wronged you, other church people, other pastors? I know it's not God. I know it's not Jesus. He wants you. He desires you. Say no to the world today and start saying yes to him. Let's say yes to him this morning, church. Say, God, wherever, wherever I've been at, maybe I haven't been doing enough with you or spending enough time with you, and the Holy Spirit's convicting you this morning, that's a beautiful feeling because it shows that you desire your heavenly Father. Because he desires you. That's not up for question today. That's not up for debate. He desires you but you need to have the knowledge and the heart posture to desire him back and say, I want to spend time with you, Lord. God wants you to return to him with all of your heart because once you do, you start saying yes to him, all the other things will come. All the other fruits will come. If you need something in your life today, I don't know what it is, 
could be joy, peace. Maybe you're struggling with anxiety. Maybe you're stuck in an addiction. Maybe you're dealing with anger issues. Maybe you have a division between you and your spouse or a division between you and somebody in your family and you don't know how to break it off. Well, I can tell you that if you have a division with you and your father, that, that's not gonna get restored. It has to start here with you and your heavenly father first. And once that relationship is healed and made right, he will honor all the other relationships in your life. Don't try to seek to solve everything else first and be like, all right, God, once I do all this other stuff and get all this right, then I'll have time. Then I'll be in a good place to say yes to you. You got that broken. You got that, me- that that's flip-flopped. Get yourself right with him today. And if you've been a believer for a while and you're like, yeah, I'm doing this. It's fine. You know, I'm reading my word and all this stuff. Well, there's always more that you can do. What more in your life can you start saying no to? Because Jesus wants all of you. And I'm not saying to be some, you know, some monk on a, on a hill somewhere with robes and all you do is study his word, pray and fast, all right? But there should always be a little bit more time, an extra 15 minutes that you can carve out of your day to spend more with him because it is going to be worth it. So we're going to take a minute here. You guys want to bow your heads? Close your eyes. Father, we thank you so much for this day, God as we learn about you and just your burning desire for us, God, that you, that you want all of us completely. But in order for us to start saying yes to you, God, we have to say no to other things or people in our life, God. So I pray for your, your boldness, God. I pray for your power, Holy Spirit, that you would move today throughout your people, that you show them those no's, that you show them those areas right now, God, that they can start saying no to because nothing is worth more than you. No time, no person, no hobby, no anything, God, is worth more than you. So it's not even an equal exchange, God. We're exchanging pebbles for gold, and you are the gold. So thank you, Jesus, for being here with us, Father. If you're here today and you want to start saying yes to Jesus, you're not a believer, it's your first time to church, your first time in a while, and you want that though, you want the peace, you want that relationship with Jesus, something you feel like it's been missing in your life, and you want that, you want him in your life to, to give, him, give you peace and forgiveness, to be made re- restored with Jesus again, and uh, through Jesus with, with God again. Now is your day, now is your time to come back to what it was originally designed for you. Come back to the Heavenly Father. Tomorrow isn't guaranteed. This is your time. This is your opportunity. This is your moment to have your name forever written on the book of life. Forever. If that's you, would you raise your hand this morning? Amen. Amen. I see those hands. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen. Keep... For those who rose your hands, raise your hands. I want to talk with you after service. Would you please just come see me? Please don't miss out on what God has for you. Please, please don't run off after church is done. I want to see you. Now, maybe you're a believer. You've been, you've been walking with God for a while, and it's become routine. Well, routine is just one step away from religious. One step away from being numb and comfortable and just doing what God has you to do because it's, it's, it's boring. It's part of your schedule. Where's your devotion? If you feel like God's speaking to you this morning and you know that there's things in your life you can give him more to, more of God in your life, more time, more devotions, more reading of his word, learning how to study his word, fasting, and all of these things. If you want more of God in your life right now, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Amen. Keep it up. Keep it up so I can see. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for those hands. Lord, Holy Spirit, we thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for this time, God, that we, as just broken people, can come to a perfect God, that you are perfect. You are good. You are holy. Nothing in this world can replace you, Lord God. And we're thankful, Father, that you choose us, that you choose us today, 
Lord God, to be your sons, to be your daughters, God, to renew our faith, renew our devotion and direction in our lives, God, that we would not be carnally minded, but we would be Jesus minded. We pray for your Holy Spirit, God, to fill all of the parts of our heart that need to be filled, God, and you push out, God, you purge those things that are in our hearts or in our minds that are not of you, God, that have been taken root or, or, or claiming territory that is not theirs. We pray against that in Jesus' name, that they have no place in our hearts. They have no place in our, in our minds, Lord God. They are just invaders, and we say that we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. So we take back that land in our hearts, in our families, in our businesses, that no more shall you take our time, that you are gone. Spirits, distractions, sins, and habits, you are gone, you are dead. In Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for this morning. And everybody said, amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We're going to go ahead and close out in worship. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. again. I 
Father God, we thank you for this time, Lord, that we were able to gather and worship you this morning with service, and thank you for your word that you've encouraged us with. I uh, pray that this week we would go forward, God, and you give us the boldness and the insight to look for ways to say no to the world and say yes to you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right.